I'm bored. Well, you're still here, huh? Uh, oh, well, you know, Aaron's still on vacation. I kind of needed somewhere yeah, to go. I thought you were omnipresent. Yeah, about that. Uh, look, don't tell anyone this. It's mm. So, are we going to talk about E3 this week, huh? Yeah, first. Thank God. Man, you're going to benefit from that a lot, actually. What, what the heck does that mean? Wait, really? Oh, I really didn't think we needed to have this talk. Mike... You really need to get a current gen console. But, but, I'm going to rip my eyeballs out if I watch you play Sonic 2 one more time. It's our E3 special here on Ram TV. Enjoy. Hey everybody, Mike Cook here. Welcome to Ram TV. Now, first and foremost, Happy Video Game New Year! We've made it through another one. The E3 2017 convention is finally over. What an expo. What an incredible time to be a gamer. And most importantly of all, what a great lineup of games coming up. Whether you're a fanboy of PlayStation, whether you're excited about the Xbox titles, or if you are a longtime Nintendo fan, I think it's safe to say that nearly everybody is excited. Whether whatever platform you're playing on, everyone is looking forward to the holiday season and, of course, the summer season for games being released very, very soon. And to uh, capitalize on that, we're going to talk about some of our favorite highlights of the Expo, some of our favorite surprises, some of the games that we knew were coming out, uh, more details on some of our favorite titles. And I'm just going to kick it off right now. Bubsy is back. I know. Who'd have thought that this weird, obscure Bobcat from the Sega Genesis days is making a comeback? Bubsy, Wooly's Revenge, created by Accolade, was announced. And I gotta tell you, I didn't see this coming, but I think the fans of Sonic Forces kinda did. And I gotta admit, with all of the hype that was going on with Bubsy being in Sonic Forces and now revealed that you can create your own character, it's very likely that people are going to be creating Bubsy just to put him in the game. But revealing true uh you know trailer footage of this game was revealed it looks like it's going to play very similar to the original bubsy uh back from the 16-bit days so if you're a fan of bubsy you know that's great but i gotta tell you that one kind of threw me for a loop was not expecting that i mean that came out of left field and it really was qu quite surprising and speaking of surprising, it looks like Sony didn't really have that big of a hit this year. And uh, except, of course, for Crash, Bandic uh, Crash Bandicoot, the Insanity uh, trilogy, uh, their presentation this year was not quite uh, what people were expecting. So to kind of give you a little bit of a recap of that, here's Matt Heine with what I think is a very accurate depiction of what you would have seen at the Sony floor. In comparison to Microsoft and Nintendo, Sony at this year's E3 had very few announcements in the way of new hardware or new titles. In fact, most of the news and trailers shown during their conference were about games that had previously been announced at last year's E3. Sony did showcase several extended gameplay videos of many of these highly anticipated PlayStation exclusive titles. These titles included Uncharted The Lost Legacy, Days Gone, Detroit Become Human, and the new God of War and Spider-Man games, respectively. Additionally, Guerrilla Games, creators of the popular Killzone franchise, announced their DLC for their highly successful IP, Horizon Zero Dawn, titled The Frozen Winds. Several new games were also announced for the PlayStation 4, being created by Supermassive Games, creators of the popular horror game, Until Dawn. One of these titles is a new interactive crime thriller called Hidden Agenda. The other, titled The Inpatient, is considered a prequel to Until Dawn, and will be available for both PlayStation 4 and PlayStation VR. The biggest surprise from Sony this year was the announcement that Shadow of the Colossus, originally a PlayStation 2 game, is coming to PlayStation 4 in full HD. Originally created almost 12 years ago, the game itself is now considered to be one of the greatest video games of all time, so having it in full HD glory instead of just a remaster is definitely something to look forward to. Thank you, Matt. And again, if you want any all, any information on any of those titles, look up Sony.com or check out the E3 website. Now let's go on to the uh, other competitor to Sony, of course, and that is Microsoft with the recent release or the recent announcement of 
the Xbox One X. And Ray has been digitally doing his due dust justice, uh, stepping out of the box for this one. Ray, tell us a little bit about the specs of this brand new system from Microsoft, will ya? Hi everyone, so to continue with the recap of E3 this week is probably the biggest news coming out of E3 for this year, and that is the Xbox One X. Uh, of course, we all knew it as Project Scorpio, but now it's, part, it's Xbox One X at the time you're saying this. And let's go through the specs real quick. It has 12 gigabytes of RAM, it has one terabyte hard drive, true 4K support as they're saying it, HDR, a 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray player, which is something that the PS4 Pro does not have, and all that can be yours for $500. I'm sorry, but the price is too much. Now. Hear me out. I am not saying that the Xbox One X is going to be, you know, a little bit lower than the PS4 Pro. Because actually, it's a, a lot more powerful than the PS4 Pro. Spec-wise, yes it is. Uh, now, do we have the games to play in its best potential? Not really. Now, future games will keep the Xbox One X in mind by having it being true 4K, true 60 frames per second. But right now, a lot of the games will just look a little, a little bit crispier on the Xbox One X. And, I don't know, spending $500 for that is something I don't really see myself doing. Now, that is the argument where people were telling me, why buy a 4K TV? You're not ever going to have 4K content or just not enough 4K content. Don't waste your money. But I wanted to future-proof myself. So, you know, I didn't get the 4K TV. I didn't have the funds for it. But... That was my intention, and now we have all this 4K content. If you all don't know, if you have a 4K TV, uh, then you can stream a lot of Netflix shows and movies on in 4K. So just that's a little quick tech tidbit for you. Now, who is the Xbox One X perfect for? Ideally, it is for the new Xbox owners or people with the original Xbox One, like I do, to upgrade into this new one. But I love Connect, and yes, I'm sorry, I love Connect. I think it, I know they canceled it, I know it's pretty much gone now, but I th I thought it was gonna be a good idea. I don't know, I just, $500? Like, when have we gone to that point as a society that spending more than $450 for a console is ludicrous? Because Guess the price of the original Xbox One was $500. And look how it did not dominate the field at PS4 and PS4 Pro are still the best selling console month by month. But hey, that's just me. I know I had to keep this quick because I know Michael said I had to keep this quick. So sorry, I can't talk more about why I say no to the Xbox One X for now, for now. Okay, I'll see you all later. Bye. Thanks, Ray. I'm looking super forward to that when it comes out. Well, we're going to take a very quick break here, but when we come back, we're looking into the web-slinging adventures of Spider-Man and many surprises from the world of Nintendo. You're watching Ram TV's recap of E3. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to Ram TV's E3 2017 recap. Now, the last Spider-Man game that came out that the fans really thought were a smash hit came out in 2004. However, Zack thinks that that drought just may be over thanks to new up-and-coming developer Insomniac. Zack, tell us what's going on. Hey kids, today I'm coming at you with something relevant to video games, E3, and my love of superheroes. The latest Spider-Man video game trailer. Let me be the first to say that Spider-Man is not one of my favorite heroes. I don't hate him, it just doesn't do a ton for me. But I do appreciate the movies, and the video games are consistently a blast. In my opinion, the reigning champion is still Spider-Man 2 for the PlayStation 2. It had that combination of free roaming, brutal combat, decent enough story based on the movie but with a few more villains and arcs added in, and pile driving people off skyscrapers was always fun. This trailer packed a lot into it, so I'm going to try to do as little talking over the action as possible, while still trying to keep this in a time slot that doesn't have the powers at RAM having my head. Voice. Whatever. One of the first things a lot of people will recognize from a combat perspective, stealth and melee respectively, is that the game will look very familiar to longtime Batman Arkham players, while mixing in its own twist that only Spider-Man could provide.
Then we get a helicopter chase around the city. You need to bring it down. I know. Maybe you could superhero a little faster? <sighs> Working on it, Yuri. According to Insomniac, what you're seeing, right down to squeezing through the destroyed billboard, is not scripted. Insomniac developers promise web swinging is physics-based, meaning your webs actually need to attach to something to allow swinging. One thing I'm up in the air about is this gratuitous use of quicktime events. I mean, quicktime effects are an effective means to both allow the player to push buttons while not having to program gameplay mechanics for every single breath their character takes, but they stick out like stick-rotating, button-mashing sore thumbs when they're overdone. Something I'm really appreciating about this experience is that the game is not tied to the upcoming Spider-Man Homecoming movie, nor is it an origin story. Hi, is this the flight to Newark? We're dropped right into Spider-Man being your friendly neighborhood crime fighter and even interacting with longtime beloved villains, like Kingpin. Hey, Willie. You. Nice jumpsuit. Slimming. Marvel Digital Media Vice President and Executive Editor Ryan Penagos tweeted that Spider-Man PS4 would see a 2017 release, but has since admitted he may have misspoke, bringing Spider-Man to a likely 2018 release. In terms of beauty, action, and heroism, this is actually one of the best 8-minute trailers I've ever seen. I'm definitely getting this one when it releases. What do you think? Oh, and last but not least, in typical Marvel style, the trailer featured a post credit scene. It's over. Come on, dude, let's go. Miles! Thank you, Zach. Now, just so you know, this new Spider-Man game is going to be exclusive to the PS4 Pro upgrading. So, if you're already on the fence about it, this just may be the push that you need. And now it's time to head into the, in my opinion, the winner of E3 this year, Nintendo. And now, obviously, we all knew what was coming. Super Mario Odyssey just blew us out of the water with all of the new uh, gameplay mechanics that were realized and, and revealed. Not only that, but we also got the new Breath of the Wild expansion that's coming out. However, there were quite a few exciting reveals. And David, one of our newcomers here on Ram TV, has the first that takes us into the world of Pokemon. David, tell us what's going on. Pokemon has come a long way from the days of the Game Boy, and has been played over multiple systems, even on your cell phone. Let's not forget about Pokemon Go, which took the world by storm last summer. Pokemon will look to continue to grow on the Nintendo Switch, which was released a few months ago. At E3, Game Freaks announced that the creators of Pokemon are working on a core RPG game that will play on the Switch. I have one more announcement. Game Freak has begun developing a core RPG Pokemon title on Nintendo Switch. It may not release for more than a year, but we hope you'll look forward to it all the same. The Switch offers a lot of flexibility to game creators, which Game Freak showcased with their newest Pokemon Stadium type game, with so many ways to play the game. So what will a Pokemon RPG game look like on the console, and what will it feel like? While unfortunately there was no trailer, no gameplay, and no footage, the hype is super real. I know I personally am super excited about this game, so if you guys want to leave your comments down below, what do you think the game will look like, and how do you think it'll play on the Switch? Thank you, David. Great job on your first ever report here through Ram TV, and I gotta say, as a longtime Pokemon fan, I am excited to play this on the Switch. And, since it's not coming out for a little more than a year, I have time to get one. <laughs> Well, I think it's safe to say Nintendo absolutely dominated this year. They did a terrific job. I mean, they with Super Mario Odyssey and, of course, The Legend of Zelda, uh, Kirby, Yoshi, all these other great games that were coming out. Uh, ARMS will be hopefully releasing here pretty soon. They got Pokémon Tournament. Uh, lots of great games are coming out. But I think the one that everyone was super excited about and nobody expected, although there was quite a lot of speculation about it, two new Metroid games. Metroid Prime 4 and Metroid Samus's Return. Now, both games, I think, did something incredible to boost the morale of the fan base of this franchise. First and foremost, 
Metroid Prime 4. I mean, we've all been wanting this game forever. The original first-person shooter to take us into Zebes, into the uh, into the, the ranks of the Federation and the Bounty Hunters. I mean... It's amazing. I mean, I'm super... I Obviously, there's not a lot going on in terms of story or gameplay or what to expect, but it's coming. Metroid Prime 4. you got, you got to be excited about it. And then not only that, but we get a 2D Metroid game for the first time in 13 years. The last one that they had was Metroid Zero Mission, which, believe it or not, was a remake of the first Metroid game. And now they're making Metroid 2 again. And... I gotta admit, I was really pissed off when they took off AM2R, or another Metroid 2 remake, uh, with no explanation, except they said, take it down, get rid of it, forget about it, and they got rid of everything. And I thought it was really sad, and Nintendo did some really shady stuff in regards to handling that whole takedown. But now it makes sense. I mean, it was like, dude, we're making our own. Stop it. <laughs> and I think Nintendo, well, no, at the time, it was a really, really crappy thing time in their life and in all of Metroid fans' life, I think now definitely made up for it. And I, I mean, if you got a copy of AM2R, at least you have something to keep you preoccupied until this new game comes out. And it's slated for this year, so you never know. Holiday season 2017 is going to be a great time to be a gamer for sure. Well, I hope you enjoyed our E3 recap. First off, thank you so much to my amazing co-hosts, of course, Zach and Ray, and now Matt and David. Welcome to the team, guys. It's glad to have you here on Ram TV. And, of course, thank you to Aaron. I hope you're enjoying your vacation. And, again, congratulations. And most importantly of all, thank you, guys. I mean, without you, this there's no way that this show would even be possible. So we hope you enjoyed your E3. And, of course, it bears the question... What was your favorite part? Leave your comments below. Let us know you, the game that you're most excited about. Uh, tell us anything that we missed, anything that you'd like to hear more elaborated on. And uh, until next time, this is Mike Cook signing off. Aaron will be back with you next weekend. So if you didn't like me, guess what? I won't be here. Um, and uh, we do have some really pretty cool surprises coming out through Valley Studios. So... Thank you so much for checking us out. Um, if you have missed any of the recap of, e of E3 thus far, check out YouTube. Go check out one of the videos. It's going to be great. I mean, it's been a great con you know convention. Lots to look forward to, and we hope you guys really enjoyed our coverage. So thank you again, everybody. Take care. Have a great week, and we'll see you soon on Ram TV. So long, everybody. Oh. Hi, thanks for watching Ram TV. If you like what you see, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. We release new episodes every Saturday and new tiny Ram videos every single day. Be sure to check us out on Facebook, GoFundMe, and Patreon. Also, please leave us your feedback. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks again, and see you next time.